matter if WWE is meant to be the benchmark for all this wrestling malarkey and they get to repeat the same thing over and over again, then so am I. Why? Here's why. Here's why. Here's why. Stunner. Here's why. Here's why. Here's why. Here's why. Well, that was a mistake, wasn't it? I just looked like a massive goof in all of those, and in some of them, like I hadn't even hit puberty. It means flipping Vince McMahon wins again. Vince McMahon always wins, and somebody else that always comes out victorious is Brock Lesnar, because as you probably know by now, he is your Money in the Bank winner in 2019, and there's a lot you can actually get into to try and figure out why this was the case. I've screwed up my catchphrase now, but it happens now, and then let's face it, we've over this already because of those clips. But anyway, why? <laughs> So let's start with the obvious, Vince McMahon is scared. Or when I say scared, I should probably say worried. With his back against the wall as TV ratings continue to decline and go down the pan, he feels like he needs to do something. And clearly the first thing he thought about was bringing Brock Lesnar back to WWE television. I get that, I understand it. A big part of me is for that. Bring the Beast back, the Beast is exciting, the Beast feels like a star, but for the love of everything, don't put him in the title picture, because that just means we're doing the same thing we did years ago. I don't get that. It's just it's mismanaged. And again, I understand, I do. Lesnar is a name that loads of people know, especially casual fans. So when you hear, oh, Brock Lesnar has moved back to WWE, maybe I'll tune in. But as soon as you do start attaching him to the World Championship, which you do when he does win Money in the Bank, you're basically repeating past mistakes that you absolutely should be staying away from. For example, do you know when else we did this? We did it at WrestleMania 9 with someone you may know as Hulk Hogan. Bringing the Hulkster back in the mid-90s wasn't a problem. But what was, was throwing him right back into that title scene when he had an impromptu match against Yoko Zoon. And that is kind of what we've done here. Brock Lesnar was never meant to be in Money in the Bank. He just popped up and went, it's mine now. And that's exactly what Hogan did back then. It pissed everybody's off, not only because he was taking somebody else's spot. So we've actually been here before and now we're back. And this is why Vince McMahon has done this. Anybody with a vast experience in any field is always going to tap into their memory at some point and try and pull out things that they've done before that they know worked. But surely, Vince McMahon, you know that that Hulk Hogan thing didn't work. And if you think it did work, you are sorely mistaken. That's why a year or so later, Hogan was in WCW because it was an utter bust. Also, when we actually look at Brock Lesnar and the wrestler he should be in 2019, it is an utter misuse of that character. Ever since he went away post-WrestleMania 35, I've been looking for the point where Lesnar could come back as long as, as I said, he wasn't in the title scene. Because then straight away, we can enjoy Brock for what he brings to the table, but not have to worry about anything else. Like I said at Ups and Downs for Money in the Bank 2019, and go and check that out if you haven't already. I'd love to see Brock Lesnar versus Drew McIntyre. Brock Lesnar versus Ricochet, Brock Lesnar versus Sami Zayn, and you think that should be a match given he stole Sami Zayn's place. Even Brock Lesnar versus Baron Corbin. And you've got, not got a belt on the line. I don't care. They haven't beat up big boy Baron. You get rid of the belt, you can do whatever you want, and fans are just going to love it. You can insert it into the middle of the card somewhere, and everybody will have a good time. But when you go back to task, that's when the bottom falls out. And I tell you, more people will shrug their shoulders after they see what happens on Raw and go, I don't want to watch this anymore. It just feels like the same old stuff. You also don't want to start hot-shotting angles for ratings, which is another reason why we did what we did, but it will work. I mean, not only are you going to have that post-pay-per-view boost for Raw later on, but you're also going to have people again tuning in going, well, I'm kind of intrigued to see what Brock's going to do, even though deep down, you're not 100% sure he's going to be on the show. He could be flying home right now. That's happened before, his boy who cried wolf. But that doesn't help long term because this briefcase absolutely has to be used to build young and up and coming stars. And that was even more important this year because back in 2018, we gave it to Braun Strowman and that didn't really work. And in 2017, we gave it to Baron Corbin and that absolutely didn't work. So it was more imperative, more important than ever than this time we smashed it out of the park. And we didn't. Also, now that Bailey has already cashed in and Lesnar is Lesnar with all the points we've just ticked off, it means probably by July we're not going to have any briefcases on the main roster. Even if somehow Brock does keep it for a long time, as we know he doesn't show up week to week, 
So it's done. It's over. Finished. There is more to all this as well, and I think it does depressingly tie in to the Superstar Shakedown Showdown, whatever the hell the Saudi Arabia pay-per-view is going to be called, and as we know, that's going down a few weeks in June. But it's long been touted that at there, we're going to get Seth Rollins versus Brock Lesnar too for that Universal Championship, and I can already see the story. Brock will cash in probably before the thing, say, Seth, I'm going to win my belt back in Saudi Arabia. Seth will win as he should. I'm fine with that. But again, like I just said, we've just negated the money in the bank stipulation because of a damn Saudi Arabia show. I mean, what a waste of time that is, all the weeks and the time we invested in building up the actual match itself. Like Drew was going on about it and Baron and Ricochet and everybody else, Finn Balor, they all wanted to do well and instead they killed themselves and they've got absolutely nothing to show for it. How can they become stars when their end result is a literally nothing. It just makes it feel pointless. And again, why aren't we putting it on somebody that could have used it? Ricochet would have been great. Andrade would have been great. Even if you stuck to what the obvious plan was and gave it to Drew McIntyre, he came out the back of that thing looking like a monster. Remember he grabbed Ricochet, just tossed him over the rope like he was a pillow. He could have held on to that thing until WrestleMania next year if he had wanted to. And as long as you keep building him and get people to go, man, Drew, he a bit... He a bit off, man. I tell you, he'd kick anybody's ass. When he does cash, you're like, wow, now he's got a championship. Well, who the hell's going to beat him? Instead, we just undid all of that. I'm not saying that we should give it to Baron Corbin again. But look, if you go back through the last few years in WWE, there is a pattern. Specifically, 2016, 2017, 2018, and really, some of 2019. And that is that Brock Lesnar being the world champion and ever turning up to Raw eventually got worse and worse because it's the law of diminishing returns. It was kind of cool at first. He felt like a star, but then you get used to it and you miss the belt being a permanent fixture. So you can't be looking back when you've got to look forward, especially because something inside should go, well, you know, we are in this bad position at the moment with TV ratings and it kind of feels like less people are watching. It's not something that happened overnight. It's probably, you know, the circumstances of long term and that all starts in 2016, 17, 18, 19. So don't, don't do it again. Go the other way. Start introducing new things to your product. Be creative and accept that as long as it took for the things to go down, when they start going back up, that's going to take a long time as well. There is no overnight fix. So if this is the lay of the land and you're pissed off by it, I completely understand. We all stick with WWE and want to see what they're going to do. And now it just feels like we jumped in a DeLorean and ended up back where we were to begin with. And again, the surprise itself was cool. It always is in pro wrestling, hence why the fans and me myself popped hard when it did happen. But it's when everything calms down and you think about it, you realize, nope. That isn't going to help anything. Big pops and the shock factor does not negate what you could have done over the entire year. And in fact, that even sounds crazy. When it came out of my mouth just then, I was like, there is no way anybody could comprehend that because you've got to think about your company. Do you want to do something for 12 months or do you want to do something for two days? You never pick this one unless you intend to sell the company within 48 hours and he doesn't. And yet, here we are. Brock Lesnar, Money in the Bank 2019. If somebody, a gambler or a bookie could ring me up, I've got a bet to make because Brock Lesnar at some point will absolutely win the United States and the Intercontinental Championships just so that when all is said and done, he can go, I won everything in WWE. I am the best. The final last, oh man, is that all of this could have been put on the shoulders of one Bray Wyatt. It would have been a fabulous return to the in-ring part of being a wrestler and would have said to the fans, look, this isn't the Bray Wyatt you remember. This is a new one who comes out, takes advantage of situations and walked away as money in the bank. Also, if everybody went that crazy for Lesnar, they would have gone doubly crazy for Bray Wyatt. Everybody loves his yowie, bowie, howie, towie, whatever. It just seems like such a wasted opportunity and I don't want this to feel like I'm ragging all over Brock Lesnar because as I always say, respect and fair play to the beast. He gets a telephone call, he's told what to do, he gets a big paycheck. Nobody in their right mind is going to turn that down. Although I will say, it did result in the only time I've ever seen Lesnar look uncomfortable. When he was climbing that ladder and he got to the top, in that one like solitary second, I thought to myself, right there and then, I could take Brock Lesnar because he looked absolutely uncomfortable. Also, who on earth would have guessed this? We all do predictions when pay-per-views are coming up. We all sit down and we fantasy book. Anybody that did fantasy book this probably laughed afterwards. <laughs> Thought, well, that would never happen. That wouldn't make any sense. And yeah, here we are. Was it May 20th? May 20th, 2019. Brock Lesnar, Money in the Bank, and he's probably going to cash in for a Saudi Arabia show. Which also has Goldberg versus The Undertaker. And they wonder why ratings are down. Now, don't forget to leave a comment below and let us know what you think about Brock Lesnar being Mr. Money in the Bank 2019. 
Also that Sami Zayn got killed off again. That's twice now. Garbage truck and hung up by a rope. Like, share and subscribe. Hand over to whatculture.com. Read stuff articles a lot which are about this. And money in the bank. Follow What Culture on Twitter at WhatCultureWWE. Watch more videos here. Oh, something's in my eye. That was weird. That was random, wasn't it? Watch more videos here on What Culture Wrestling, including ups and downs for Money in the Bank. It's live now. My name is Simon from What Culture. Thank you very much for watching. And boy, howdy, do I feel split down the middle today. On the one hand, I did enjoy it massively when Brock Lesnar's music hit and everyone exploded. I was like, what oh, isn't this great? And then when everything had settled, I was like, oh no, now we're just going to go back to everything we were doing 12 months ago, which I did enjoy. But like anything, I don't enjoy it when you've done it once. Everyone's going crazy about Game of Thrones at the moment. If Game of Thrones ran exactly the same episode, you know, in number six than they did on number one, you'd be like, well, this is the same thing. What are you doing? Right now, that's what WWE is doing. They're like a sitcom or a drama that just repeats episodes. Verbatim. Verbatim. But with a little bit of a twist. That's not how we write TV. Even I know that, and I'm an idiot who can't grow any hair. Let's end the video. Let's move on. I still love you all. Still love wrestling. Still love WWE. I'm an impenetrable fortress of positivity. Oh, I liked it. I'll see you soon.